The Soul Redeemer, Chapter 8J, Inside My Mind. The Problem of Pain. Nicole had been in pain of one kind or, or another for so long that unbeknownst to her it had become wrapped up in a familiar spirit. The stress of a lifetime of trauma had taken a toll on her body, and even though she was experiencing tremendous mental, emotional, and spiritual healing and freedom, physically she was beginning to suffer various inflictions and diseases. It seemed like she could do nothing but sleep, and she was barely able to get out of bed. When she did, she was so sick she felt useless. One doctor told her that there was nothing he could do for her and that she was just going to have to live with it. Since she was unwilling to accept that diagnosis, she went to another, who gave her medicine that made her feel better, but had other serious side effects which she was also unwilling to accept. One morning, in the middle of this seemingly hopeless dilemma, she asked God what she was supposed to do. Jesus answered quickly with a question, What have I told you to do, Nicole? Immediately, she knew the answer. Several years before, Jesus had told her he wanted to do her to do three things, and she suddenly realized that she had not been able to do them. I'm so sorry that I haven't been able to do those things for you, Jesus, but I just can't with this sickness. I've asked you to heal me, but you haven't done that yet. I believe and know you can, so I'm just waiting. Jesus asked, Nicole, would I tell you to do something that was impossible for you to do? She thought about that a moment. The impact of the truth hit her like a ton of bricks. That's it, isn't it? Of course you wouldn't. So if you're not behind this illness, then I know who is. Jesus smiled and said, It's about time, little one. I have not healed you because I want you to learn to use and apply my authority and power to physical problems as well as spiritual and emotional. Many physical problems are actually attacks of the enemy set out to destroy my people or to render them useless. Satan is like a roaring lion seeking to devour, but he patiently waits in hiding until the opportune moment to strike in such a way that his victim won't know it's him. He is a master of disguises and hides behind masks of sickness, disease, infirmities, mental disorders, and emotional problems, hoping you won't recognize him. You need discernment to be able to tell when something is just a part of living in a dying world and when it's a spiritual attack. When I show you that it is an attack, I don't want you to sit back and wait for me to do what I've gifted you to do. I want you to take action and heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Matthew 10.8 So Nicole, now that you know this is an attack, what do you need to do? I need to take authority over the spirit of infirmity, don't I? Nicole saw Jesus smile, so she continued, In Jesus' name and by the authority and power he has given me, I command you, spirit of infirmity, to release me and leave me. Jesus said, That's good, Nicole. But unless I tell you specifically to send the demons somewhere, it's important for you to command them to go directly to me when you tell them to leave, because I know what to do with them. You see, if you don't tell them where to go, many will wander around looking for someone else to attach to, usually someone close to their previous host. It is also okay if you ask me to send angels to come and gather up any that are rebellious and disobedient and who refuse to leave. That thought horrified Nicole. To think of demons leaving her and attaching to one of her boys was too awful to contemplate, so she hastily added, You, spirit of infirmity, will go to Jesus and wait for his judgment of you. And Jesus, please do send me angels to make sure this spirit obeys. Nicole didn't feel any different in that moment physically, but spiritually there was joy. And not five minutes later, the fever that had racked her body for over a year was suddenly gone. Praise God! Nicole tried to be obedient. And even though she was better, she was still unable to do the things God told her to do on a regular basis because of the pain that continued to torment her. One night, when she was unable to sleep because of the pain, she lay in bed praying. Jesus called out to her from the tabernacle, and she found herself cuddled up in his lap as he rocked her in front of a fire. After some time, Jesus asked a strange question. Nicole, would you like to be healed? Do you want the pain you are so familiar with to be gone?
She understood what he was asking her, and she began to evaluate. If there was no pain, it would mean that she would be able to do things that had been impossible before, and that was a good thing, wasn't it? The pain had been something that had hindered her from doing much of anything. Without pain, she would have greater responsibilities. She suddenly found that she was reluctant to let it go. Had she come to rely on the pain as an excuse when she didn't want to do something or when she was afraid to do it? She realized that she had been using the pain as a defense mechanism, a sick, false idol that she had depended on for life, but in truth was ushering in death. She looked up into Jesus' eyes and saw his love for her. His love was so great and powerful. She didn't want to disappoint him, and in that moment she knew that even though she was afraid of releasing the pain, if she didn't, it would stand in the way of her relationship with him and his love. Now, with Jesus beside her, giving her courage, she turned to him and committed her life, every part of it, to him. All the good and all the bad, all the sin, her sin and the sins of others done against her, all the blame, all the guilt and shame, all the pain. She was ready to release it. She deliberately knelt down at the foot of the cross and poured her heart out to the Lord. Suddenly, she became overwhelmed with pain, emotional pain that Good had still been carrying and was now giving over to her, physical pain that was rooted in past events, pain of a broken heart, and tormenting pain that was being inflicted by demons. She had held unto these things long enough. It was time for Good to give her memories and emotions of pain to Nicole. I.S., however, was unwilling to lose more of his major strongholds, and so, as the walls came down and the transfer of pain was in process, he began a physical assault on Nicole with the intent to kill. He was adamant that if he couldn't have her spirit, he would take her body. The spirit of pain began squeezing and twisting Nicole's physical heart, taking the form of a heart attack, while demons of torment began to stir up emotions with such intensity that within the torture of her soul, she cried out for release, even unto death. Jesus saw what was happening and jumped into action so fast that Ias had no time to act any further. He carried her into the healing room and laid her at the foot of the cross, then leaned up over Nicole and whispered, What do you want, little one? The time has come for you to choose, and choose quickly. Do you want to embrace the pain, or do you want to be healed? Nicole threw her arms around Jesus' neck and cried out, Oh, please take the pain if you can. I don't want it anymore. Please forgive me, Jesus, for relying on it instead of you. Jesus laughed joyously and said, I was hoping you'd say that. I do forgive you. Okay, Nicole, now you must renounce the spirit of pain. Do it quickly. In Jesus' name, I renounce the spirit of pain. I don't want you anymore and command you to leave my body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name, I command you to go directly to Jesus and wait for his judgment of you. And I call upon the angels of God to come and make sure the demons obey. As soon as the words were out of Nicole's mouth, two large shiny angels appeared and reached into Nicole's heart. When they withdrew their hands, they were each holding two small, ugly, pixie-like demons who were dripping with blood, kicking and screaming in anger, pain, and torment themselves. Jesus whispered, When you renounce them, I covered them with my blood. They hate that! Nicole watched as the warriors carried the demons away right out through the roof, and she suddenly realized that the tormenting pain had stopped. She sat up and took a very deep breath, a breath of life. After she rested a moment, Jesus said, Nicole, I am going to show you a special secret of mine that I hope will sh you will share with the world in time. He pulled a little golden box covered with many beautiful jewels out of his pocket. Did you know that I never waste anything? I will never erase the past. But I love to take all the bad things that our enemy tried to use against you to keep you from my love and to destroy you and I change it into something that we will use against him and that will bring glory to me and my kingdom and that it will make you strong. In this little golden box are the ashes of your life, all that remains after burning your black bundle. Now watch and see what I will do with them. 
He looked deeply into her eyes and smiled as he reached into her heart and began to heal the broken places. Then he took the box and planted it in her heart. My love, I give you beauty instead of ashes, joy to replace your mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Through the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony, others will experience hope, healing, and freedom, and will overcome as you have. There was a momentary sharp pain in the girl's heart, and then a miraculous, warm, glowing light began to flow through her body and her soul. She was set free from the pain that had once consumed her. Joy began to well up from the deepest part of her spirit and flow through every fiber of her being. She began to sing and dance with joy, and Jesus danced with her. They danced until she fell to the floor exhausted. It was then that she noticed she was wearing a new gown, a beautiful sparkling white gown, a garment of praise over her armor, and she realized that the girl who had knelt at the foot of the cross only moments before had been transformed and had danced in victory as a woman.